With offices opening back up across America, here's what business owners and employees need to know before returning to work. Step one, consider a staggered return. At the end of the day, I think where we're going to end up is a hybrid. And they're falling into three categories. They're saying, listen, if you're at risk, if you're a 70 year old or you're any age and you actually have uh, you know, comorbidity, some uh, compromised immune system, then we're going to let you work from home for a while. And then for the rest of the employees, we're going to question whether or not your job can be effectively done remotely. And then the final lens through which employers are looking at this is from a cultural standpoint. The ultimate question is, what kind of culture as a leader, as a CEO, do I want to have? Step two, consider antibody testing. Think about it uh, like a Swiss cheese model. Everything has its own holes and you're trying to look at ways to have overlapping measures such as you're closing as many of the holes as possible and have redundancy of measures. So I think antibodies testing can be part of that. Uh, just being mindful that not every antibody test is perfect and it's not a complete panacea. So I think it's useful, uh, but it's useful only as one of the pieces that you might do. Step three, build areas of protection. We think it's mostly spread through large respiratory droplets. And this is the reason for this, you know, so-called social distancing of six feet. So what a, what a plexiglass barrier does or some other type of barrier is, it's blocking the majority of those droplets that are flying out of the person. And you combine that then with someone wearing a mask, essentially you're adding two layers of protection there. You know, we're doing a lot of the things that most companies are doing, things like health screenings and temperature checks and social distancing in the offices. We're also thinking a lot about the way that we distribute food and even pathways through the office, whether, whether those should maybe be one-way pathways so that people aren't bumping into each other in the way that they normally do. Really thinking a lot about our facilities and, and how to use them well. Step four, minimize contact. There are various things to think about looking at ways to minimize the direct face-to-face -face contact with individuals. When you have meetings where if you're around the, the boardroom or something like that, you just have a little more space next to people or they're not directly across from each other. Or, you know, do you really need all these people at the meeting? Can you reduce the number? Uh, and also the other thing I would say is, of course, we think about respiratory droplets being one way to spread. The other way is uh, through contact with uh, fomites or inanimate objects. So being mindful to clean high touch surfaces, door handles, light uh, switches, things like that could be decontaminated on a routine basis. Step five, establish PPE protocol. We are now watching very closely what happens when you get people back into the workplace, particularly where businesses don't mandate the wearing of, of, of masks and how will employees um, work together or not. You have a new area of, of dispute that's going to need to be resolved by employers. So before you reopen your business or return to the office, don't think of safe versus unsafe. It's not a black and white thing. Think in terms of risk and keep in constant communication with employees as you continue the transition over the next few weeks. Remember, staying positive is the best thing you can do to weather the pandemic together.